guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, Ticket today we're jumping back into some more Create Astral. And today, we're going to be automating the redstone chip, the integrated circuit, and also some copper casings. So, I hope you guys are ready. Welcome, welcome back today. My goodness, my goodness, are we going to be diving into some more automation. We have redstone chips to make. And uh, it's actually going to be a little simpler than you might think. Um, I've been brainstorming ideas. I do a lot of these in my head. I don't know why I do it in my head, but I should go into like a creative world to test things on. Uh, but I have an idea in my head that should hopefully work. And we should be able to fit this uh, in just as much space as this setup is, uh, is in, which is our electron tubes. So hopefully we'll be able to get these redstone chips set up. Now, these are a very important part um, that is used to, you know, use later on. So we definitely want to get these up and running. As you can see, they're used for a lot of crafts down the road, like computer terminals and things like that. Um, they're also used in making the conduit, which is a gradient, but they're also going to be used in these navigation mechanisms, um, which this is used for Elytra. It's used for all kinds of other stuff, right? So we definitely want to get this up and running if we can. Um, it also is used in the space station to make these uh, navigation mechanisms. Now, my ideas for this uh, this concept build are constantly evolving. Like it's changed, it's already changed since what I initially went to set out to create. So, um, what I have here is my my input or output. I guess you could say this is actually going to be my input. This is currently rotating the wrong direction. But I think if I extend this out one, we won't be dealing with that anymore. So there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and get this extended. Um, and now what I want is to have an item vault that extends the distance here. And this will actually be incredibly useful for us uh, because we are going to have uh, a belt running on the backside. And this is actually where all the processing is going to happen, or at least should happen, right? Um, so on this, let's go ahead and get a belt placed across. And uh, we're going to have a spout. The spout places the fluids. Um, actually, we need it the other way around, don't we? Um, so the spout goes over here because this is going to be the input, the initial input. It's going to go into this item vault, um, which extends all the way across here. Fantastic. It's then going to output onto the belt, and then it's going to take it off the belt, put it back into the item vault, and then spin it back around because these, this, this is going to be the output, and this is going to be filtered uh, to only accept, or on the other side, it's going to be filtered to only accept the outputted item. Um, now, we are also going to need a deployer and a mechanical press. Uh, now, the deployer will go here. Uh, this needs to be rotated like this and then rotated again. Let's un unfist that. Let's actually change this. Let's see if I can't get this to place correctly. Because there is a specific way I want this rotated. I think oh, I'm going to have to get on top. And there we go. So, I want this turned like this, so that way this press can be turned into it and they can rotate each other. Um, so this will be our steps. Now, the other benefit of this being here is I can also send the items that are needed uh, to do this craft 12 times. I will know the exact amount that's needed and we can just use the same, uh, same input barrel to send all of the items in and also use a crude storage to pull from this item vault and put it into here, uh, which will end up being like copper wire, right? Um, I think we're going to end up using copper wire for this. So all in all, this should work. Um, now we also need to take this seared melter and we need to pipe into here. Um, but that's, that's, we can do that here in just a second. Now, uh, the only thing I have left to do, I guess, is to set up the filters. Um, now, with the crude storage being here, this does actually pose a little bit of a problem. I almost wonder if I should just set up a separate belt line just to use for this. Because now that I'm thinking about it, this would require that to be filtered if something else is going into the item vault. Man, all the different variables. Okay, figured it out, and I'm going to be utilizing the item vault as a pipe. So, if I do it like this, then we have a piping system, so I can put the items in here force them into the item vault, which should work. Um, and then we should be able to pull out of this this storage, which is sort of a pipe, 
and have that go straight into the deployer. So this will be our makeshift piping system, utilizing item vaults. How interesting is that? Oh my goodness, now I just gotta get all of the funnels set up and uh, we're ready to kind of kick things off. So I'm almost there. I just realized this actually has to just move up one and back one. So I did go ahead and make enough room. We can just put the crude on top and then manage it from there. I need to be able to access or have a little bit more wiggle room. And so this should work. And plus it puts everything in line with the same height. So there we go. So there's that pipe. Oh, I guess this can only extend three. I don't think these are actually connected then. So the cheapest way possible, just add another crude storage. It's just one more thing we have to configure, but at least it all fits in here nice and neat. Now for the filtering, it's pretty simple. We're gonna have a funnel uh, that pulls out of here. So let me grab a funnel real quick. So funnels, I think I have all the funnels out. Okay, there we go. So funnel here, that's gonna pull out of this belt. Then it's gonna go into here, right? And it's gonna be in this item vault. Um, now, hope now the only place that things can go is right here. This is going to output onto the belt. This is going to go back into the item vault. At least this is the idea. And then it's going to just keep repeating and repeating until we have the filtered item that comes out of this brass. Uh, now, an easy way to filter this without actually doing it is uh, to actually take this redstone chip and just put it in there and make sure it's an allow list. And then we can just use the filter. Um, so hopefully this all works and the only thing we have to provide it is our electron tubes So we can put an item frame on here That is an electron tube as an input and then our output is going to end up being this item uh, And of course we put copper ingots in here and then up here will be our wire that we need to supply to it Now the power for this is surprisingly easy. I just transferred a gearbox off of this belt into another gearbox to another gearbox that powers this belt and gets it spinning the proper direction put a regular gearbox here, and then I have my cogwheel powering this. Now, the other benefit uh, of this setup is I can just go ahead and apply a vertical gearbox straight to that, and that gets this spinning in the proper direction. Uh, now, the only thing I need to power uh, is going to be this. Um, and let's see, one of the best ways of getting power over there, hmm. I think the best way and the most compact would be to just add the shaft here add two shafts to this and just combine a belt. And now both of these are spinning. And now this is the moment of truth, right? Um, we need to figure out how to get this going. So over here, I can easily just make up a bunch of copper wire. Um, of course, I need to get item tags on all of this so that way we can fully know what goes where. Because uh, one of these I have filtered separately, right? Uh, these actually have to have filters. And so this has a filter on it that I believe is only rods, right? So as you can see, or this is this is copper wire. And then this one over here is rods uh, only. Now, here's the moment of truth to find out if this all works. I put one electron tube in. And it looks like it's working. And it should do this 12 times. And like I said, as soon as the 12th one is done, we should have it outputted on the other side. Oh my goodness, and this is super compact for this. Now, the reason why I'm building this, I know this isn't used for a whole lot, it's a proof of concept for all of the other builds. As you can see, there's a redstone ship. So it gives me an idea of how much room we actually need for some of these contraptions and how small we can end up making them. Now, I've sort of come up with a design for uh, the, uh, the next step, which is going to be integrated circuits. Um, so I've started working on this, and the the idea is that we send it the lapis block. Uh, it goes through its first round, which skips all this stuff, and then gets pressed into the sheet and then routes back around. And so uh, this requires four machines to actually process, whereas this required three, which actually fit perfect into the item vault. Well, this I have to extend with crude storage. Uh, to explain how this is going to work, we're going to send the items into the item vault. The item vault is then going to pull the item into the crude storage unit to do that, or actually the crude storage is gonna pull it out of the vault. Uh, and it's gonna pull right here with an auto on the side. And then we also need to output from the front. Um, so with that, it is going to go into here, go into the crude storage unit, output onto the conveyor belt, which is then gonna take it down here. 
And then this is going to input into the front. And then it is going to output to the right. And then that should send this back around. And we just get this rotation uh, going over and over again until the item is complete in which we will use a brass funnel to then put it into here. Um, and then up top, this is where we're going to put our wire, same as this, except the wire is going to also need to be on a belt, except this belt needs to send to this, uh, these two deployers. Um, and I'm trying to think of the best way to get this to happen. Uh, I'm guessing we can just go ahead and still use a crude storage. Um, but this time we're going to have belts that split the items into two. Uh, so we should be able to take this like so, and we'll have a belt that connects right here. And then we'll just use the tunnel system to get this from here to here. So with the belts, I've actually done a little bit of changing up here, and I'm going to be utilizing the fact that these storage units can actually place items directly onto the belt without needing funnels. Um, so we're going from this crude storage unit to this one, to this belt, which then has the brass tunnels on top, which will allow us to split the stacks um, just in its default mode, and then should be able to be pulled in from these crude storages. Um, so we need to make sure that these are set up to input from the face because uh, currently they're all messed up, right? Because I was inputting from the side. So I'll just input from the front. It's like that. Make sure auto inputs on. And then the output should still be fine. That is on the bottom. So same for this one. Make sure the input is on the face. And that should pull off the belt as well. Now, I have found that uh, if you use this as a pulling and pushing method, um, it, it does mess with these machines. These machines like do not like the fact that you're pulling and pushing, and they these heavily rely on the fact that a funnel would be on the belt. Now I've got everything connected up. It's actually pretty easy when you put these machines together. I just have a, uh, a gearbox that's switching the direction, gearbox there, doing the same thing that this one's doing. Very, very similar. Uh, and same with this belt line, the belt line evenly matches up with just another gearbox. Um, and then I'm using a belt to power this, which is in return going to actually power these machines right here. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is if I crawl up real quick, uh, we just need to technically tell this, hey, don't send anything out. So I'm just going to put that into the filter and then we can use a shaft here to spin this by just taking a belt and dragging that there. And so uh, this isn't going to be used for item transfer, but uh, it's definitely used to power these machines and is also powering this. So in reality, this is a pretty simplified machine um, and should work. As soon as we get this powered and start sending everything over, I think it's time to test it out. So I believe this is almost ready. Last thing I have to do is create that filter that's going to go right here. And then we just uh, need to give it, let's go ahead and uh, for right now, I'm going to give it just a stack of copper. Actually, we, let's just give it 12. And let's see if it evenly distributes this. I'm really hoping it does uh, just for the sake. Uh, I think it, I think it will. I think it will definitely evenly distribute it. It should, because uh, even if that only puts out like four items at a time, I think if it, if it put out three items, somehow out of this that would pose a little bit of a problem um honestly we could probably get rid of this crude storage and just extend this out one that could work honestly uh but for right now i'll just leave it the way it is let's go ahead and put these in and this will be a good way to test honestly because back here these now have the copper wire how much does this one have six exactly and six so it did it evenly distributed them which is exactly what i want that's out of 12. Perfect. Oh my goodness. This is actually functioning better than I thought it was going to. Okay. Um, now, output on this. We just have to make sure to turn this on and make sure to output to the back. That will send the items. And then, same for this. Output to the back. Lots of configuration going on. And then last but not least, we should be able to give this a block of lapis. Uh, looks like that is now filling with silver. And I think this uses like four nuggets worth, by the way. 
So I put the block in. That should do its initial press. And as you can see, it goes through. Oh, this is this is fantastic. This is working. I don't know why I expected it not to work, but uh, I was just experimenting with the way these crude storages work. Okay, and so now it has rested here. So this is a little bit of a problem, actually. If it does land here, though, I could just place in a filter. Um, because this will connect in. Uh, I think it's because this pulled it out faster than this could actually read it. And so I guess I could use a filtered filter in here. Can't believe I said filtered filter. I almost wonder if these crude storages are too fast. That would be kind of a pain if that's the case. Um, so that needs to be here. And then I will set the filter. I hope this actually pulls from here. Um, so if I grab that, put it in here. Hopefully that works. Um, I'm actually kind of, can, I'm, I'm kind of wondering. I mean, since we have this, we can probably just place it in. So that is filtered in. And then if I take this out and just put that in, that should be filtered. Wonder what happens if I toss this back in. Okay, so it ends up going out. Did it end up in here? It did end up in here. Okay, so one only one one way to try it again. Uh, one way to do this is to just try it again and see if that solved our problem. You can see it's going to go through, do all of that same process again. Uh, but the hopes is that this will prevent it from getting clogged up. I thought it would just continue to go on down the line. But apparently it does sit here and wait. And it sits here and waits again. That is very interesting. All right, I'm going to be a little sneaky with this one and see if this actually works. So right here, I'm going to place a crude storage, place this inside, lock it, and then tell this to pull in automatically from the face. And so it should have pulled in and then output to the top. So output automatically to the top. And now that should be here, right? But we got to make sure it doesn't get stuck. Um, so let's see if this actually functions now. Yep, cannot do it this way because you end up with a issue here. Um, now, the only way to solve this <laughs> would be to just make this do the process twice, which would do this over and over again. Yeah, you just can't have these pull from here for some reason. So after a lot of de deliberation, I may have found a solution that I hope works. So just completely get rid of the item vault and use a belt. Um, now this does come with a little, it does come with a problem, a little bit of a problem, but we might be able to solve this here uh, by using smaller belts, right? Um, so if we put this here, oh, not that. If we put ourselves a double belt right here and a belt over here that's doubled up like this. I'm hoping I can get this to stop doing what it's doing. Um, I do, however, need to get some sort of inventory in the middle. Uh, so I'm probably going to have to change the way our pipes are working. It's not going to be as compact. Um, as you can see, we're already running into a bit of a problem. Let's go ahead and remove these for now, and then we'll route the pipe as needed. Um, but if I place some sort of item vault or barrel or what have you underneath here, what I'm hoping is I can put a funnel here and here, but what I need is directly on this belt. I can filter out the item so it doesn't get pulled here and uh, we can set up a belt. I'm probably making this way more complicated than it needs to be. But this belt can actually have a funnel placed on it, like this. Which should be able to pull the items off of the belt. And I can also put a brass one here. And then we can make a deny filter for this and make sure that only the processed finishes right there. Ooh, this could work. So with the deny filter in place, and with a actual buffer in the middle, which saves us for doing multiple items at a time. 
it works. It works. It has a deny filter. It sends it through. Oh my God. One final test to just make sure. Moment of truth. Copper in. Block of lapis in. Also, I do need to hook up the the fluids. I'll get the fluids hooked back in. It's going to be a little bit more janky, but I just want to make sure that the whole process works and that the final product, once complete, yes, ends up in here and doesn't land back on the belt. Oh, thank goodness. Believe it or not, even after that change, I'm hoping that the, uh, the, the pipe doesn't actually interfere with the belt here. Um, the only thing I might have to do is put a trapdoor here just to make sure that if the belt line somehow gets jammed up, it doesn't start splinging our items off. Um, but, but let's test. Let's test our last, last time. Last time, I promise. Uh, we put this in. It does not interfere. And so the pipe can go right over the belt because we are pulling off of the side of the belt, which I didn't even realize was a thing until just recently, until I was working on this. So the things you learn while doing these and look at that another one's already done oh my goodness this is so good now after that automation i decided to go ahead and and make one more on this side to sort of round everything off um and i hope this works <laughs> i haven't tested it yet uh it's kind of at that point though and but i, I automated copper casings um so the idea behind this should be to just not use as many belts as i've been using and, uh, and see if it works. Uh, now, for this, I'm gonna need andesite casings. Oh, I, I forget, I, uh, I have andesite casings, I believe, tucked away in one of these. There we go, there's our andesite casing, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab one of these and I should be able to put the andesite casing in here, um, provide it with some rubber and some copper sheets. So the rubber goes in here, copper sheets go in here. I still have to configure the uh, the sides though. Now I've been doing this all manually uh, and there's actually a better way to do this. So once you get this set up first on one of them and you know you're gonna have the same one next, uh, you can make this a little bit easier on yourself uh, by control C to copy this and then control V to paste. Uh, but you need to be in the configuration menu. So control C to copy the configuration and then open this and control V and that will paste the configuration for you. Oh my gosh, the amount of time this would have saved me. Uh, now for this one, it'll be in on the face like that and then out on the bottom, just like that. And then I can copy and paste this into the next one. Whew, boy, the amount of time that would have saved. Okay, and now to test, will this work? Let's uh, let's set this one up and this is going to be the same thing on this one. It'll be in and then this side will be out. Just like that. So whatever's in here should end up in there. And uh, this one's actually the opposite. So I, I can't use this one uh, to copy and paste. So not all of them are going to work, but this will be in taking the item out and then out on this side automatically. And that'll send that through a couple of times. And it should be trying to press it. Uh, but for some reason it's not. Well, of course, how's it gonna press it <laughs> when it doesn't have rotational power? I'm a dork sometimes when it comes to this. Uh, it's just, I mean, honestly, the, the, the sheer amount of times I'm like, oh, why is this not working? And it just doesn't have the rotational power connected to it. So to remedy this, gearbox, gearbox, rotational power. There we go. Now we're rocking and rolling. So place that in. As you can see it gets pressed and then ends up in here. Very nice. So yeah, we now have the ability to make these a lot faster. Well, guys, with that, I have to say a lot was done today. Uh, so we are basically, we're almost caught up, almost caught up with all of the stuff that we did prior uh, to going to the moon. So we now have just about everything sort of set up for some automation. Uh, now, the reason why I'm setting it all up in this way, you may be kind of wondering, why do you, why are you doing this and not just aut fully automating everything? Well, I want to be able to use Applied Energistics to actually automate these things. 
So if I set them up as their own sort of compact machine, I can go, hey, uh, craft me some wires because this setup behind me needs wires. So it'll send it to this over here, send the items required for the wires amount, and it'll process the, the exact amount of wires based on our input ingredients. And then over here, once it's done, it'll send those wires the, in the exact amount that we need into a setup that we can set up over here uh, that will then transfer to this container. And then it'll also put the amount of lapis blocks, for example, into here. And hopefully we can get by with uh, crafting without using the uh, the big mechanical crafters. Hopefully we can get by with a lot of our crafting being done with applied energistics. Now, uh, even thinking about applied energistics in that, that advanced part uh, kind of worries me with how far you have to kind of get to start doing all that. But uh, that will definitely be something that I hope to be able to cover in this mod pack. And that will be hopefully automating all of the processors and stuff like that somehow with create and apply energistics. Yeah, that, that's going to be a fun process. Now, unfortunately, we are out of time for today. Ah, man, there's only so much you can fit into a YouTube video. My goodness. But I'm hoping here soon we're going to be able to get into a really, really cool exploration mod that'll be coming up. So uh, now that we got most of our basic automation out of the way, there's still a couple of things left to do. Uh, even before I can start building this building, I was thinking like I shouldn't even start building upwards yet because we don't have everything sort of in place, but uh, that will be coming very, very soon. Uh, now, anyways, anyways, uh, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to click that subscribe button. I know a lot of you guys have subscribed recently. I do appreciate you guys. Welcome new crew members, uh, but also be sure to check me out over on Twitch. I do live stream at twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. You can find me over there. I do stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. And uh, occasionally I have been streaming this as well. Uh, so you might catch me on a Friday or what have you playing this. Uh, but anyways, you won't find me unless you follow me over on Twitch. Uh, guys, I really appreciate it. Be sure to join the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And uh, speaking of Discord, uh, it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Blake Larry. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over in the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. Guys, I appreciate you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.